the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. And Signal Gasoline is tops, too. Tops in quality. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal Circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly dealer-owned Signal stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story. Boiling Point. Kelly never knew exactly when it was that he decided to kill her. Thinking it over afterwards, he realized that murder is something like a pot boiling over. The fire's underneath for a long time and nothing happens. Then all at once, the heat reaches a certain point and there it blows. And you look back in horror to find you kill someone. The odd thing, of course, was that right to the end, it wasn't that he hated Janet. She had a kind of charm. She was capable And she was attractive enough that on the right kind of a spring day with the sunlight filtering through the leaves of an oak tree, hitting her face just right, a fellow like Kelly might think he was in love with her. At least, that's how it started three years ago. Kelly? Yes? Another sandwich? Oh, no, no thanks, Janice. I'm I'm full up. (laughs) What's happened to your appetite? I don't know. Maybe it's a symptom. Oh? Will you... Do something for me, Janice. What, Kelly? Tell me something, honestly. All right. I came to this town out of nowhere, really. I'm a failure. 29 years old, been fired from the greatest assortment of jobs in captivity. (laughs) I meet you at a party. From then on, everything's different. Is it, Kelly? Yeah, sure. You gave me a build-up with your boss at the Star Realty Company. He puts me on as a salesman. And suddenly, for the first time in my life, I'm a success. Why? Well, it's simple. You're a good salesman. No, that's not what I mean. What I want to know is, why did you do it for me? Oh. Now, you said you'd be honest. Oh, maybe I have the interests of the Star Realty Company at heart. Mm-hmm. And maybe I just like you. Come on, have another sandwich. I don't want to take them back. <laughs> All right. I want to go over the escrow papers on that Williamson deal again. Oh, no, not now. Don't you ever relax? Well, I'm relaxed. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Come on, come on. Lean back and take your glasses oh. off. Oh, all right, all right. Is that better? Mm-hmm. You ought to take them off more often. I'm blind as a bat without them. Well, what's the difference? <laughs> You're not looking at the wolves. They're looking at you. Like you're looking at me? Oh, they better not. I don't want anybody else to look at you like this. Don't talk like that, Kelly. Not unless you really mean it. I do mean it, Janice. I'm crazy about you. Oh, I know I'm not much of a guy, and I'll never know why you bothered with me. But, Janice, I I want to marry you. You won't be sorry I'll work hard and be a success. That's enough, Kelly. Oh, please, please listen to me. I heard all I want to hear when you said you love me. Aren't you going to kiss me, darling? Just like that, Kelly. A boy, a girl, a picnic on a green knoll at the edge of town, and it's over. She's Janice Jameson now. You have a small home together, and 
Each morning you commute to town in your jobs with a star realty company. But Janice isn't satisfied, Kelly. She talks of nothing but of the two of you in business together. Jameson and Jameson, real estate brokers. It would take more than you could ever save on your salaries, of course. And it was about then you began to wonder if she'd ever be satisfied. Perhaps it was then, too, that the fire began to burn under the kettle, and the temperature slowly but surely started to rise. And uh, here's a letter for Kennelly and Botsworth. Uh, gentlemen... With reference to the lease on the property at Lilliam Way and Gladstone Boulevard, we are uh, informed that the present holder Kelly. is perfectly... Huh? Oh, yes, Janice? Uh, can I speak to you for a moment? Well, I, I'm tied up. Couldn't it wait? No, please, right now. Uh, all right. Excuse me, Miss Eldridge. Now, what's it all about? Kelly, our chance has come. What are you talking about? Jameson and Jameson, remember? Oh, that. <laughs> all right, Janice. What do we use for money? Oh, look. Look at the teletype from New York offering 40000 for the corner of 8th and Maple. But Knowles has an option on that corner for thirty, has hasn't he? Did have, you mean? It expired yesterday. But shouldn't we tell Knowles, give him a chance he to... He won't be back until next Wednesday. Well, there's no way I can get in touch with him. Honest, darling, Knowles will be tickled pink when he knows we've grabbed this chance to start on our own. He's a big man more ways than one. I know. That's Listen, why I... Listen, Kelly, I, I tried my best to get Knowles to renew his option. He said that corner would never be worth anything. This means 10000 for us on a $1,500 investment. Now, you run right down to the bank and get a certified check. I'll tell a type New York that Knowles no longer holds the option. Well, I hope you know what you're doing. Oh, I do know, and I know something else, too. Hmm? In a few days, we'll have a brand new office with a nice glass door reading Jameson and Jameson. <laughs> Sign that Jameson and Jameson. That's all. Jameson and Jameson. Mm -hmm. I'll have it right out. You made a slight error, Janice. What? Not Jameson and Jameson. Jameson and Stooge. Please, Kelly, let's not get into that again, Why not? Dear. Why not? Let's be honest. You've got the brains. I run the errands. You set up the deals on paper. I go through the motions. Well, that's not true. This, this Brewster deal, for instance... A nice, clean little deal. I'm all set to handle it myself. Kelly, you're just being silly. There, there were oh, there were just a few things you hadn't considered. I thought it might help if I wrote them out for you. That's all. There's something I don't think you realize yet, Angel. I'm really not a backward kid at all. Why, you act like I'm not quite right. But you're wrong, Kelly. I, I think you're the best salesman in the business. Ah. Besides, you're my husband. I love you. Now, what difference does it make? Which one of none, us does None, none. But why can't you give me credit for some intelligence once oh, in a while? Kelly, listen. Why, you're not my wife anymore. You're, you're a business machine. Darling. As cold as a piece of steel. You don't realize what you're saying. Sit down. I'm not through. Kelly, no. For once, you're going to listen. I'm your husband, Janice. Kelly. Your business partner. Please. Not a pet spaniel you lead around Please on a leash. Kelly. Oh. Janice. Janice. Oh, Janice, I'm sorry. Jan oh, good Lord. Yes, Mr. Jameson. This is Mr. Jameson. Get a doctor up here. Hurry. I think Mrs. Jameson had a heart attack. Looking down at her now, you have a queer sense of guilt when you realize that you've actually been wishing something like this would happen. Anything to free you, give you back your independence and self-respect. Yes, Kelly, you're sorry and ashamed. And you almost take the kettle off the fire before it reaches the boiling point. Particularly as you hear the doctor telling you it was a heart attack. That Janice will have to stay in bed and rest with a day nurse in attendance. But that's what changes it all right back again. The nurse's name is Vera. And there's something like music in the deep, cloudy blue of her eyes. Something about her voice, the youthful grace of her that sets your heart racing, makes you think that here is everything you missed in your marriage to Janet. Good morning, Vera. How's the patient? I... I just don't know, Mr. Jameson. Kelly. Mr. Jameson. <laughs> Check. She seems to think the doctor's all wrong, that it's silly to think of heart trouble at her age. Well, that's the way she is. Well, something has to be done about it. She says it's all foolish and that she's going to get up and go back to work. I know. I know. I've been over that with her several times. Well, you ought to talk to her, Mr. Jameson. Kelly. 
What good would it do for me to talk to her? Well, after all, you are her husband. Yeah. Sometimes I wonder. What do you mean? Oh, stupid. Harry, is that you? Uh, yes, Janice. I'm coming. It was sweet of you to take me home, Mr. Jameson. Kelly. Uh, why do you keep insisting that I call you Kelly? <laughs> Do I? Every night you've taken me home. How long has it been now? Three weeks? Four? Twenty-three days. Oh, did you keep a record of it? Uh-huh. In the back of my head. If you want details, I can tell you what happened on every one of those days, too. You, um, you have a very good memory. It's easy when you have a reason to remember. You ought to go on the stage. Professor Jameson's memory act or something. <laughs> Well, I'd better go in now. Oh, no, 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 please. Just a minute more. I, I've got some work to do. I, I might go on another case soon. And... Another case? Dear, what are you talking about? Well, I won't be on this one forever, you know. But, Dear, it's out of the question. She, she, uh, she's a sick woman alone in the house, and, 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 and... Oh, why lie about it? I think you know why I'm talking this way, Vera. Yes, I do. I love you. I'd better go in Oh, now. no, no, Vera, I... Kelly, please. Vera, don't. If only you were free. I'll to... be free, Vera. I'll, I'll. What do you mean, Kelly? Huh. I don't know, Vera. I don't know. With the prologue of Boiling Point, the Signal Oil Company is bringing you another strange story by The Whistler. Friends, this being the first program of March, I'm reminded of that old saying, in like a lamb, out like a lion. With Signal Gasoline, it's always that way. It goes into your car as a clear, innocent-looking liquid. But once inside your motor, it generates the power of a lion. Lithe, eager power that's quick to spurt ahead in crowded traffic or to send you springing effortlessly up steep grades in high with nary a ping of complaint. But while Signal's power may be likened to a lion, you'll find that your car's appetite for signal gasoline is gratifyingly small. That's because the extra efficiency which today's signal gets from your motor naturally means extra mileage, too. So when it comes right down to it, your speedometer is really the best yardstick of gasoline quality. That's why signal says, to be sure of the tops in gasoline quality, there are just two things to remember. One, in gasoline, it takes extra quality to go farther. And two, Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. And now back to the Whistler. Strange, Kelly. You didn't know it, but that night in the car, the last night you took Vera home, a murder was taking shape. A murder made of several things. Of your love for Vera, of Jameson and Jameson, and $20,000 in the company account. And naturally, of Janet. She'd never give you up, Kelly. You're sure of that. And the next day, as you sit alone in your office, you're wondering about alternatives. Puzzled, even a little frightened by the sudden impulsive thing that popped into your head as you said good night to Vera. I'll be free, Vera. I'll... What do you mean, Kelly? Yes, Kelly. What did you mean? You thrust it out of your mind. Try to concentrate on the stack of letters in your desk. And then, just before noon... Uh, Jameson speaking. Well, Kelly, this is Mac. Oh, hi, hi, Mac. What's on your mind? I've been trying to reach you people. I uh, may have run on to something. I'm not sure. Well, what is it? Well, I had dinner last night with one of the lawyers from Mayberry and Company. Yeah? He had a few drinks and sort of got to talking. Oh, about what? A property deal. It seems that Mayberry and Company are going to put up a six-story branch on the corner of 84th and Pine. What? Why, that's way out in the middle of nowhere. It's straight stuff, Kelly. I'll say, uh, 
Say, uh, anybody else know about this? I don't think so. The whole thing's been on the QT. They, they picked up that corner for a song. Wish I'd had it. Well, oh, never mind that. Maybe the surrounding property will go for the same kind of a song. Yeah, that's what I wanted about. Why, in a year, maybe 18 months, there'll be a whole community out there. And if we had the lots, why, this, why the sky's the limit. You, you think so? Oh, no doubt about it. Gee, I, I'm glad you called me, Mac. Yeah, well, I really wanted to talk to Janice, Kelly. If she thinks it sounds well, like... Well, uh, <clears throat> Janice isn't well, you know that. Yeah. Now, look, we'll have to move fast on this, Mac. I'll but tell you what we'll do. Wait a minute, Kelly. Not that fast. It's a $40,000 investment. I'm not going ahead until we have her opinion. What's the matter with you? I'm running the office now. Maybe, maybe not. This is a big thing. Kelly. I realize that, Mac. You're but that... lucky to have someone like Janice to turn to. Yeah, but, Mac, I... Listen, either talk it over with her or count me out, Kelly. I have a lot of faith. Uh, what... Skip it. I'll, uh, I'll get back to you. Okay, I'll be waiting. Oh, Janice. Janice. What does he take me for? I'll go ahead with it alone if he doesn't want to... Uh, what? Janice. Surprise. Am I interrupting something big? Well, uh, never mind that. What are you doing here? I, I thought... That uh... I belonged in bed? I know, Dr. Allen thought the same thing. But today he had to admit it was all brought on by strain, overwork. The rest did it. I'm fit as a fiddle. Yeah, but, 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 I'm uh... back on the job, that's all. Aren't you glad, darling? Why, of course, naturally. But um, what about uh, Vera? What about Vera? Well, I dismissed her. Is that what you mean? Well, do you think it was the wise thing to do? Don't you? Anyhow, now I'm well. I certainly don't need a nurse. Well, tell me, what are you so excited about? Who are you talking to? Oh, it wasn't anything. Oh, now don't tell me that. You're bursting with it. Come on, come on, you've had a hot tip. Well, tell me about it, darling. Who's buying what from who, and who thinks we ought to be in on it? I, I tell you, it's nothing, Janice. I, I... All right. It was Mac. Oh? Yeah, Listen. Mayberry and Company are building at 84th and Pine. We've got a chance to buy the surrounding lots. And you're all for it. Well, uh, who wouldn't be? Me. Uh, well, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is the biggest thing that's ever hit this office. <laughs> it sure is, and it could knock us flat. No, nope, we're not going into it without examining but it. But there thoroughly. isn't time. Then it isn't a deal. Isn't a deal. Janice, do you realize what you're saying? Oh, I think so. If we can't look before we leap, it's not for us, Kelly. I suppose Mac has it wrong. Uh, what if they don't build? And we're left with a row of weed-covered lots that'll never be worth a thing. Yeah, but if they do build... It's a mighty big if. Now, where did Mac hear about it? Oh, one of their lawyers, he had dinner with them. The guy was the guy started talking. Why? What do you mean, why? He had some drinks, that's why. Are you sure? How well did Mac know? Oh, for the love of... How do we know it wasn't a setup to get all of us worrying about the 84th Street section while they quietly buy up things somewhere else in town? Janice, Janice, you have to take chances sometimes. I'm sure you do. I've taken plenty of chances. Not with every cent we've got. But we might make enough to pull out to forget the whole business. But... Is that what you want to do, Kelly? What do you mean? Why don't you say what's on your mind? That you're as suspicious of me as you are of every one of your deals. Kelly. It's the truth, Janice. Oh, you're wrong, darling. I've always trusted you, even while I was ill. If you think I'm suspicious of you, there must be a reason. Maybe there is. No, you don't mean that. Listen, Kelly, it was two years ago today we bought the cabin. Do you remember? Yes, yes, and we've been up there once since. Let's go once more, Kelly, right now, right away. Oh, but what about the Mayberry deal? Mac is waiting to Let's hear from us. Let's forget that. At least till we get back from the cabin. Maybe we can think more clearly up there. And when we come back, we, we may feel differently about a lot of things. I don't know, I don't know. I'm supposed to drive out to the Paxtons tomorrow. They want an appraisal on the ranch. Maybe... Maybe some other time, Janice. You can go by the Paxtons, too. From their place, you can come up the back road to the cabin. What? I'll drive up the main road and meet you there tomorrow afternoon. What time? Two o'clock, Kelly. All right, Janice. Two o'clock at the cabin. I'll be waiting for you. At the moment you agree to meet Janice, the kettle is beginning to boil, isn't it, Kelly? The first tiny bubbles are rising dangerously close to the rim, threatening to pour over, and there's no way to stop them. It's the same the next day as you drive up to the cabin. And grinding up the narrow mountain road, you admit to yourself that the Paxton Ranch was just an excuse, that you weren't even thinking of keeping your appointment there. You were thinking of an old wooden bridge, a bridge over a 200-foot drop straight down, a bridge that Janice would have to cross to reach the cabin. What you have to do is simple. 
A few bolts removed from the right places and the bridge is ready. It's loosened ancient support, certain to give way under the weight of the next car to cross. You stand at the brink for a moment looking down, then walk back to the cabin. Approaching the porch, you stop suddenly, staring. Mac's car is there, parked next to yours. You move forward stiffly, slowly, wondering if Mac saw you at the bridge. At the door, you take a deep breath and brace yourself before going inside. Well, decided to come back, huh? Oh, hello, Mac. Didn't think it'd be long. You mean you saw me when you drove up? No, just saw that good scotch on the table. Oh, yeah, yeah. I uh, was just out back checking the wood supply. Oh. Hey, what brings you up here, Mac? I should think you'd be in town hot after that deal. Well, the town end of it's okay, Kelly, under control. All I need is your signature. What? Tried to catch you at the Paxton place, but you didn't show, so I figured you decided to skip it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I thought I could keep. Sure, but the Mayberry thing can't. Here, sign this thing and I'll be on my way. Oh, Mac, I uh, I meant to get back to you. I, uh, <clears throat> I talked to Janice and uh, she isn't interested. Well, well, that's not what she told me. What? You talked to her? This morning. She was worried about my tip, but that lawyer's a good friend of mine. She's convinced. And she signed already? Uh-huh. Now you, okay? Well, sure, okay. Certainly, give me the pen. Right here? Yeah, that's it. Well, ah, there you are. Good. And now, now you better get back. We don't want any slip-ups, huh? You uh, <clears throat> came up the back road, didn't you? Yeah, but I'll go back by the front road. It's fast. Oh, uh, I don't think so, Mac. I take the other way. Uh... No, no, I'm in a hurry. But, I... um, um... But what? Look, Mac... Look, do me a favor before you go, will you, fella? Run over these papers on the Paxton property. Uh, see if you think my ideas are right. Gosh, I don't know. Didn't Janice go over them? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. But Paxton's a pretty tough guy to handle, and I'll need all the ideas I can oh. get. And uh, look it over, will you? I'll be right back. You're trembling as you go out of the door, aren't you, Kelly? Because everything is ruined if you can't talk Mac out of driving down the front road and over the bridge. You've got to stop him or keep him from leaving at all. You wanted to get rid of him, wanted to tell your own story of the accident. But now you have to settle for the next best thing. If only you can keep him here, if there's something you can do. You glance at his car parked next to yours. Hurry over to it, lift the hood. It won't take a minute to fix it so the car won't start. You just get the hood down again as Mac comes out of the cabin waving the papers. Hey, these look fine to me, Kelly. I'd say you'd covered all the angles. Oh, you uh, you think so? As far as I can see. Here, I, I better be on my way. Can't let any grass grow under our feet on this one. Yeah, I, uh, I guess you're right. Yeah. But, oh, well, what's the matter with this thing? I'm sure it's got gas. Well, maybe there's um, a vapor lock in the gas line. Oh, no, no, she ought to start. I better have a look. Hey, listen, Mac. Huh? Listen, that sounds like a car coming up the front road. Oh, it is a car. Well, that settles it. I gotta wait a little while now. One way road, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right, Mac. You just have to wait. I guess it's Janice. She's uh, meeting me here this afternoon. I'm supposed to get here about two. Oh, that reminds me, Kelly. I forgot to talk. Uh, hey, Mac. Huh? Mac, that, that's not Janice's car. No, it isn't, is it? Here, Kelly, I, I meant to give you this. Hey, Mac! Mac, that's Vera's car. Okay, so it's Vera. Maybe this... Come on, come on. We've got to stop her, Mac. She'll go through the bridge. What are you talking about? It's a trap. I thought Janice would be driving up, and I weakened the supports. You planned that for Yes, Janice? yes. Help me, Mac. Help me. Vera. Vera. Down. Down. Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, in place of the little chat about one of Signal's products or services that we usually have at this point on the Whistler, Signal Oil Company is giving this time tonight for an announcement in the interest of public welfare. Once each year in March, we're asked to think of those who, in time of unexpected emergency, need the quick, friendly help that you and I make possible through the Red Cross. Just who are these people? Why, they're the victims of disasters such as earthquake, flood, fire, wreck, or epidemic. Disasters that can strike any one of us any time without warning. Who else? 
Millions of discharged veterans and their dependents have called on the Red Cross for a helping hand. And don't forget the thousands of hospitalized veterans who may depend on the Red Cross for a long time to come for their recreation and entertainment, their letter writing, shopping, and other assistance. These are just a few of the hundreds of ways the Red Cross is called upon to help every day. It's going to take $75 million to answer all the calls for help the Red Cross will receive this year. So give as generously as you can, remembering that you're the lucky one to be in a position to give help rather than to need help. And now back to the whistler. Yes, Kelly, it was strange, wasn't it? The way it sneaked up on you. The way the temperature rose slowly, quietly to the boiling point. Now with the temperature back at zero, Vera lies dead in the wreckage at the bottom of the gorge beneath the bridge. The bridge whose supports you'd hacked away to trap Janice, your wife, so you'd be free to marry Vera. And as you stare down in fascinated horror, the words of Mac begin to penetrate the cloud of fog surrounding your brain. If you hadn't been so insistent on my going over those Paxton papers, this might not have happened. Paxton papers? That's right. I had a note for you from Janice. Janice? Yeah, she decided not to come and asked me to deliver this when I got here. Every time I tried to tell you about it, you interrupted me. Here, yeah, you'd better read it while I phone the police. The police? Oh, wait a minute, Matt. I can't wait, Kelly. I've got to report a murder. Better take a look at Janice's note. Yes. I guess I had, Mac. Why not? Dear Kelly, I decided not to meet you at the cabin. For a long time, I felt you no longer loved me. Now I'm sure. I had it out with Vera after you left yesterday. At first, she denied everything, then admitted the two of you were in love. I was tempted to tell her she couldn't have you. Then I realized you weren't worth the fight. So I'm going to Reno, and you'll be free. I have an idea Vera will join you at the cabin. She's your kind, Kelly. I hope you both will be happy. Janet. That whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Wednesday night at this same time, brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speed, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Wally Mayer and Betty Lou Gerson. The Whistler was produced by George W. Allen, with story by Joe Pagano, and music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Next Wednesday, for a full hour of mystery over most of these stations, tune in a half hour earlier. Enjoy The Saint, as well as The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>